excited about the message tonight. The Lord has been dealing with me about reestablish God's goodness in our lives. I know uh, through time we have different experiences with God, some of which have been turned out uh, in our thinking turn out to be positive but some of them maybe don't turn out the way we would like for them to, to turn out mm -hmm. and so we begin uh, questioning what happened and why things happen and, and so that begins to erode away the foundation of his goodness and what we want to do tonight is learn how we can reestablish his goodness as a foundation in our life Everything God does for us comes out of his goodness. Everything in his kingdom relates to goodness. And so if we're um, unsure about uh, his goodness, then that erodes uh, everything that we believe in him. And so it's good from time to time to go back to that place and say, God is good. Amen. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. I'm not I'm going to go over just a few verses of saying that God is good, but I, but I also want to talk about well, what it is that causes us to doubt his goodness. And, and that's what we're going to be dealing with, how, how to deal with our own mind and the rational mind that we all have. We all have a rational mind, and, and we begin to uh, catalog our experiences with God. Maybe we've prayed, uh, maybe the prayer wasn't answered the way we were expecting it to be answered or the on the time frame that we were expecting it. And so we begin to put all of those disappointments, let's say, all of the disappointments that each of us has uh, that have, uh, and we've experienced over time with God. And, and then that becomes a hurdle. It becomes a stronghold uh, mm. warring against our faith. Wow. And that's what we're going to be looking at uh, tonight. And so, uh, first of all, I want to say God is good. Yeah, I, um, uh, I have a couple of verses I want uh, Sherry to, to read to begin with about God is good. We'll start with a couple of verses in Psalm. Uh, so tell us these two verses, Sherry. But we're looking in these two verses about God is good. Psalms 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness is to all generations. And then Psalms 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity. Okay. So there are obviously some conditions, but what I want you to see here, God is good and he withholds no good thing. Also, Psalm 85 says God gives good. God mm -hmm. gives good and he calls, causes our land to uh, produce and to prosper. And so God is good. He gives good. He withholds no good thing. These are mm -hmm. fundamental uh, principles that we need to have in our life, established in our lives. And uh, I think about some other verses uh, related to his goodness. Uh, you know, Psalm uh, 23, uh, which is one of our favorite verses. So I'm sure all of you consider it a favorite verse. And that is the Lord is our shepherd. Well, how does that passage end? It says, surely, surely. Well, that's a good word right there. Surely. Uh, goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow us all the days, days of, of our, our life. life. Amen. So that we can be assured that his goodness is around us. It's always with us. Uh, you know, one of the things the Lord said to Sherry and I uh, 40 or 50 years ago, he said, God does not bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good in their lives. Hallelujah. That has, that has been such an anchor to my soul to know that God does not bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good in their lives. So he is good. He gives good. Amen. He withholds no, no good, good thing. thing. 
and he de- he's not bringing evil upon us, on any of us. So the evil things that happen, where do they come from? Well, they may come from our own sin, our own problems. Or they may come from a demonic attack. They may come uh, from somebody that the devil is uh, operating through in our in our business and and on our job. Uh, so the devil's maybe influencing people. But God never brings evil upon us. And a lot of times people say, well, the, the, uh, a tornado came through or a hurricane came through and destroyed a lot of things. And they said, well, that's God's judgment. No, God's judgment, he uses his spirit and his word. So his judgment is with his spirit and with his word. And it's not tornadoes and it's not hurricanes, hurricanes and it's not accidents. It's not car wrecks and things like that. Not cancer. And it's not cancer because Jesus died on the cross to give healing, to give us healing. Amen. So we have to remember, like Acts 10, 38 said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about yeah. doing, doing good. good. So Hallelujah. Jesus was always doing good. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So where did the sickness come from? It came from the devil. Where did all of the evil come from? It came from the devil. Well, some people open a door to that kind of activity, but God is good and he gives good Mm -hmm. and he withholds no good Good thing. thing. So we've got to establish that in our heart. And this, this is a real basic message today. But it's not just talking about the verses that say he's good. I want to talk about where the problems arise. And I want you to know that we are in a battle. You are in a battle. Mm -hmm. And the battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. And you might think, well, this person has hurt me or that person has hurt me. They've said evil things about me. They've done... uh, evil things. They've gone behind my back and stabbed me in the back. Uh, But what we're talking about tonight is that we war against flesh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. But the battle is in the mind. I want Sherry to read uh, this uh, verse out of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And so we're going to learn how uh, how to overcome the attacks in the mind. So let's re- read these verses okay. here. Okay, it's Second Corinthians 10, verses three through five. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For we war not against flesh, but we're in a battle of the mind. Okay, verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so here it is. The battle then is in the mind. It's in the rational mind. Now, I know that all of you, like me, have rational minds. And and we have over our lifetime, thought about the prayers that we have prayed and some of them we think, well, those were answered and some of them weren't. And so any of the prayers that we think were were not answered, then we we begin to have questions about, well, why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did this happen? And, And so all of those things, the disappointments that we've experienced as we've reached out to God and things didn't happen the way we thought they were going to happen, all of those disappointments then become a burden on us and they become a stronghold that keep us from receiving from God. And so that's really what I want to focus on tonight is we have all experienced disappointments in the past. Amen. And as we continue to carry and accumulate those disappointments then that becomes a war against our mind and against our faith. Mm. And we have to pull them down. We have to pull those strong holes down. Okay. 
let me just stop because there's okay. a word that Brother Fred just, just said uh, that jumped out at me, and that was accumulate, which means to, to let it store up, to let it mount up, uh, or multiply. That's what accumulate means. And that's exactly what we are not to do uh, with these um, thoughts. Okay. So we all have had disappointments. We've had disappointments in God. We've, uh, we've felt uh, some disappointment. And uh, they may have been justified or not justified or maybe things we don't know. But we have accumulated all of that. And we've got to deal with it because mm -hmm. it becomes a stronghold. Yeah. Now, Jesus said also, we have to deal with a strong man. Uh, we're in a battle. Mm -hmm. And he said, we have to bind up the strong, strong man. man. Okay. So what I want you to know is the strong man in this battle, the strong man that's warring against you is your rational mind. Ooh. And your rational mind accumulates all of those disappointments with God. And we've all experienced them. Uh, things just didn't turn out the way we wanted, the way we prayed at times. Uh, sometimes uh, we get our prayers answered, and that's wonderful. And we need to focus on getting our prayers answered. Uh, Sherry and I have a list uh, that we maintain of answered prayers. Uh, when God answers a prayer, and I have some that I need to add to it, uh, we're believing for things. And God, when God answers those, I write them down. These are answered prayers. Well, and that's a source of encouragement. <laughs> I know it is to us. And we all need to do it. When, when God answers a prayer, we need to write that down. Because if you're disappointed in a prayer that you prayed to God and you didn't see it manifested and answered the way you want to, you accumulate that in your mind. It's all in your thinking. And you don't have to rehearse it. It's it's all there. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're talking about there is a strong man. And the strong man is the rational mind. And, and uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8 verses 6 and 7 said um, for to be carnally minded. Okay, so what's the carnal mind? Well, it's a rational mind. A rational mind. It keeps track of all of the failures that have happened. Mm -hmm. The rats are rational mind. I, I, okay, if you uh, put your hand on a on a, a stove, on a hot stove, and it burns it, then you're going to remember that. You're going to accumulate that, and the next time you're not going to come and uh, put, put the hand in. back on that hot stove. Uh, well, it's the same thing with God. If you've prayed and you didn't you didn't think you got your prayer answered, then it's like you put your hand on a hot stove. And so you don't go back and ask, ask for that prayer again. And you don't, if you felt disappointed in something and that rational mind says, well, let's don't be disappointed again. We're not going to ask for that. So yeah. if you've experienced a, a sickness in your body and you've asked God to heal you and, and you didn't feel like you were healed, uh, then that's like you put your hand on that hot stove and you didn't want to do that again because that's the rational mind. The rational mind is not going to keep putting the hand on the hot stove. It, and it's also not going to be asking God uh, for things that it thinks it's been disappointed in. And uh, so it affects the faith. It yes, affects your faith. Amen, amen. It's, all, it's remembering all those times you put your hand on the mm -hmm. hot stove. And, and it doesn't want to do that again. And so it doesn't want to ask God for that same thing. It doesn't want to go down that alley. It doesn't want to put out its faith because it's been burned. Right. It's been disappointed. And so the strong man is that rational mind that accumulates all of those disappointments. Mm. So what are we going to do about it? Get it, chop it up. Well, it says, <laughs> Jesus said we need to bind up the strong man. Hallelujah. So the strong man in your life is your rational mind. We all have a rational mind. And we've got to get over to the point where we can trust and depend on God mm. and not remember all of these disappointments, but focus on him and who he is. And so the title of the message tonight is a reestablishing 
his goodness, God's goodness in your life. And I want to talk about it in these two concepts, peace and love. And I want us to think about mm -hmm. peace and love. Uh, there is a perfect peace, and that peace, listen to me, passes understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want, let's just think about peace for a moment. Now, you know that if you don't have any turmoil, no situations, uh, yeah, that's a peaceful situation, okay? But let's say uh, you could also have a lot of chaos in your life. You know, that's not peaceful. But God has a perfect peace, and we'll get to that verse in a moment. But So I, I have a scale for peace, and it goes from zero to 10. Zero in my life, if I have a lot of chaos, I, I say my scale for peace is zero, okay? But now if I begin to rationalize and understand, oh, this is why that happened, this is why this happened, and so my peace for with the rational mind, because I understand things, I give that a, a piece of number one. But God's peace is 10. Mm. Perfect peace is Perfect 10. Peace. Perfect and peace. peace that comes from a rational mind, understanding uh, the, the amount of peace, and you understand what's going on in your life, you understand all of these things, then that's just a piece of one. But see, God's peace passes understanding. That's wrong. That's Philippians uh, chapter four, uh, verses six and seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'll have Sherry read that verse. Okay. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay. Perfect peace. Peace. And beyond your understanding. The rational mind can only think about peace, let's say, on my scale of one. If I understand everything, everything is peaceful, I, and I don't, I'm not worried about things, then that's just a peace level of one. But perfect peace, that's 10. And that perfect peace is going to be greater than any peace that I can understand with my mind. Now, the reason I bring this up is that a lot of people are asking God, why, why? why, did, why this did this happen? Or why did this not happen? Why, 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 why? And they think, well, when I get to heaven, uh, I'm going to ask God a bunch of questions and ask him why this didn't happen, why that happened. Uh, because things didn't happen the way I wanted them to happen. But let me tell you, that's not perfect peace. And when we get to heaven, we're going to have perfect peace, but we can have perfect peace here. And I'll tell you how to do it in a moment. And, and so a lot of people think that they're going to put God on the uh, spot when they get to heaven and ask him why all these things happened or didn't happen. But that's not what happens when we get to heaven. That's the truth. Because in heaven, there is perfect peace. peace. And it's not a peace that comes from understanding. It's not a peace that comes from asking God questions. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? You, what you need to do is to put all of those whys and just go ahead and put them on the cross. Put them at the foot of the Jesus I mean. at the cross because you'll never get the answers to why. Because his, uh, the way God operates is not to try to reason with your mind. He Ooh, is hallelujah. wanting you to step up Woo! beyond the peace that you can understand. He wants you to go to perfect peace. Amen. And that is in Isaiah 26, 3. He will keep you in, in perfect, perfect peace whose mind, mind is stayed on him. Okay, so it, how do we get perfect peace? By continuing thinking about God, not thinking about our questions of why did this happen? Why did that happen? See, that's all the rational mind. The rational mind is an enemy to God. It's hostile to God. That's what Romans 8 mm -hmm. uh, verses 6 and 7 says, the carnal mind is enmity or hostile, it's hostile to God and cannot be subject 
to God, the law of God. It cannot even do that. It cannot be subject. It is not subject to God, to the law of God, and it cannot be. That's the rational mind uh, trying to understand everything. But what I'm talking about tonight is a peace that goes beyond your understanding, beyond your reasoning, beyond your reasonable mind. And what I'm saying is we're going to have to take all of the why questions, why all of the things that we didn't understand in our lifetime that related to God, we have to take all of those whys and put them at the cross at the foot of Jesus and don't ever think that when you get to heaven, you're going to grill God and find out the answers to all those questions. Now, that's not what heaven's about. Heaven is a place of love and a, pay, a place of peace, perfect peace. That's where we're starting is with perfect peace. And the other thing, the other uh, topic I want to talk about that is beyond the rational mind, and that is the love of Christ. The love of Christ also is beyond the rational mind. It goes beyond the rational mind. So if, and again, I, Freddie has a scale of zero <laughs> to 10 for love. And for love, for peace. I moved to love. Oh, excuse me. You can catch up. Okay. <laughs> I have a scale for love. Love, okay. And my scale goes from zero to 10. And when I hate people, uh, then obviously I have a zero love. Mm -hmm. Okay, but with my man, if my rational mind, uh, I say, well, okay, I love you because you love me. See, I'm going to give that a love scale of one. Love one. Okay. Now, what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter three, and I have this. I want uh, Sherry to read this. This is about a love that passes understanding. Mm -hmm. It's a love, it's perfect love, okay? So do we have- uh, Ephesians uh, 13, I mean, Ephesians 3, 3, 17 through 19. Okay, read these three verses. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Okay, so here it is. Love, God's love, and this is perfect love, 10, perfect love, it passes knowledge. It passes your understanding. You can't comprehend love with your mind. You can't understand God's love with your mind. So as I said, on my scale, if I hate people, then my love meter is at zero. But if I love people who love me, then I do that with my mind, then that's a scale of one for love. But God's love is perfect love, and that's a scale of 10, perfect mm -hmm. love. So there is a perfect peace and a perfect, perfect love. love. And those are both beyond what we can comprehend with our rational mind. So all those questions about why this and why that, we have to give it to Jesus Christ, put it on the cross, just nail it on the cross. Amen. And we don't have to look for those answers because when you get to heaven, you're not going to be grilling God about why things happened or why they didn't happen because it is an atmosphere of love, of perfect love and perfect peace. Okay, so we are to cast down every thought. Mm -hmm that ask God why this happened or why that didn't happen. I'm trying to accuse God that he brought evil uh, for some reason. No, no, you, you just press into perfect peace and perfect love. And then, see, you have established, reestablished the goodness of God. Mm. You, you've taken all of those strongholds. What are the strongholds? Mm. It's all of those fears and doubts that you've had because you've had disappointments. All of those things mm. are strongholds and they keep attacking your mind. Uh, it's like you, you put your hand on the uh, hot stove, it burned it. And, and, and so it's like you asked God for something, you prayed about God uh, prayed to God about something and you didn't get it. It's like 
getting your hand burned on the stove. And so over time, you begin to ask him for fewer and fewer things. Uh, but you've got to put all of those down, put them on, at the uh, cross of Jesus and stop asking God, why did this happen? Why did that happen? And press in to perfect love mm -hmm. and perfect peace, because that's the way it's going to be in heaven. It, it, he is not going to explain to your rational understanding why things happen on the earth while you're here. He, he, it's just an atmosphere of in heaven mm. is perfect peace and perfect, perfect love. love. And so we can press into those two things here. And then that's going to, we're going to see that God is good. He, he gives good. He withholds no good thing. And so then we're reestablishing goodness in our life because I'm teaching you what to do with the strongholds and who the strong man is in your life. The strong man is that rational mind that wants to understand everything in you. When you lay that down, that's the strong man. Jesus said you have to bind him up, bind him up. Well, how do you bind up the strong man? You begin to ask the Holy Spirit to help you bind up the, the strong man, that rational mind, and you lay down your body at God's altar and let the Holy Spirit renew your mind. Stay in the word of God. Study the word of God. It's by the word of God and the spirit of mind, uh, spirit of God that you renew your mind and, and focus on these two concepts, perfect peace and perfect love. Now, where does perfect peace come from? It comes from keeping your mind on God's word. Now, keep him in him. perfect peace whose mind is stayed, stayed on, on thee. And you trust God. So keep thinking about the word of God. Keep trusting God. Anything that comes up in your rational mind that tries to cause you to doubt God or doubt, doubt his goodness that's not perfect peace. And that's the stronghold that has to be cast down. See, that's what Sherry read to us mm -hmm. in 2 Corinthians 10. We have to cast down those strongholds, and that's all in our thought life. And the other one is perfect love. And uh, 1 John 2, 5 uh, says that when we obey his word, we will have perfect love. So mm -hmm. it's obey his love. Uh, obey his word, then we'll have perfect love. And then it says in uh, 1 John 4, 12, that uh, when we love one another, we will have perfect love. And so mm -hmm. we, we keep his word, obey his word, we love one another, and uh, we have perfect love. And then there's a third thing, a third element. How can we have perfect love? First of all, we have to obey his word. Second, we have to love one another. And third, we have to stay in unity and fellowship with God, and then our love is perfected. Those three things. That's how yeah, we go can go over them again. That's how we can have perfect love by obeying his word, loving one another, and fellowshipping and being in unity with God. And then what's going to happen? Perfect love casts out, out fear. fear. I that's mean first John 4:18. So that when we do those three things, obey his word, love one another, and fellowship with God, then we will have perfect love, and perfect love will cast out fear. Now, fear, let's think about fear. Fear is that stronghold. Yes. Because we, we have put our hand on the stove and burned it, on a hot stove and burned it. And, and I'm just using that as a symbol that we have prayed in the past and we didn't get our prayer answered, a particular prayer. So any prayer that we prayed, we didn't think that we had it answered the way we wanted, when we wanted, then it's like putting our hand on that hot stove. And, and so we begin to accumulate all of those things and those become a stronghold against us. And the rational mind is the a strong man, Jesus said, if we're going to spoil his goods, the strong man is the rational mind that brings up all of this doubt and unbelief and, and fear. fear. And fear. And fear hath torment. See, 
This is a, a very simple message tonight. It's to reestablish his goodness. And, and these are the things we need to press into, his perfect peace and his perfect love. And those go mm. beyond the rational mind. That goes beyond your history uh, with God. That goes beyond your experiences Dances with, with God, God, where you've been disappointed with him. It, it's perfect peace and perfect love go beyond understanding. They go beyond rational mind. Uh, I hope you can get ho catch hold of this message tonight. Mm -hmm. It will change your life. And you can believe for things you haven't believed for in the past. I mean, and, and you don't mm -hmm. have to depend on the things that have accumulated in your rational mind anymore, but to realize that we need to press on to the highest level of peace, to the highest level of love, and I've shown you how to do it tonight. Very simple. I want to review these things again. The perfect peace comes from keeping our mind on God's mm -hmm. word. Perfect love comes from these three things, and this is all in 1 John. It, it says that we need to obey his word, love one another, and fellowship with God. When we do that, we'll have perfect peace, and perfect yeah. peace will drive out all that fear, all of those disappointments. And so we've got to, we've got to come to a higher level. That's what I, I'm encouraging mm -hmm. all of us. And this message is for me as much as it is for you. I mean, this is yeah. about all of us coming to a higher level to cast down the imaginations and arguments that we get from our rational mind. Our rational mind is is going to give us arguments about why prayer will not work and why our faith will not work. That rational mind, see, is hostile uh, against God. It will always be hostile to God. It cannot be subject to God. So all we can do then is to crucify our carnal Hallelujah. self. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, uh, lay down your life and pick up my life, I the mean, higher yeah. life. Uh, pick up your cross and follow me. If you're going to be my disciple, Jesus said, you've got to pick up your cross and follow me. That means you've got to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your whole being as a living sacrifice. A and God says that's just reasonable for you. You, you need to present your body and that's your mind and your will and your emotions and your spirit everything present the body holds everything so hope put everything down in your mm -hmm. life and, and say i'm going to submit to god and submit to god's will and, and i'm going to focus on perfect peace and perfect love mm -hmm. and that reestablishes god's goodness in my uh, in my yeah, life as long as i i'm focusing on what I think is love and my carnal mind and th and loving those people who love me. And, and as long as I, with my carnal mind, I'm thinking about the kind of peace that I can understand with my mind. See, the, that, those are low level. Those are inferior levels of mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. and love, the inferior. And what we've got to look for and press into is the superior perfect love and perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And then by mm -hmm. doing that, we're going to reestablish God's goodness in our lives. I hope you can catch hold of this today. I hope mm -hmm. I've said something that will inspire you to reach to a higher level because God has such great things for each and every one of you. He has great things in mm -hmm. store for you, but the burdens have to be put down. The, all the disappointments from the past. Mm -hmm. See, we're living in the now and in the future, and, and we can't drag the past with us. We can't uh, drag all of that past baggage with us. It it weights us down. It, it keeps us from reaching the highest level that God has for us. He has great mm -hmm. things for you, and you're going to have to lay down the burdens. You're going to have to lay down the disappointments that you've had in him and realize that God is good. He gives good and he withholds no good thing. So I want to thank you tonight for being here with us. I pray that you ponder these words that I've talked about tonight. It's a, it's a different kind of message because it's, 
it's a supernatural message. And I want you to know that if you can grasp hold of it, it's going to carry you to a higher level mm. in the things of God. And you're, you're going to operate with more power and with more authority if you can press into God's perfect peace and God's perfect love. I'm going to turn it over Hallelujah. to you. Hallelujah. I'm just, uh, as uh, Brother Fred brought forth this message uh, tonight, I, in my heart, I just began to repent. And so I'm going to, uh, and this is up to you, whether or not you want to repeat after me, but I feel like we need to start with repentance tonight. And, and so um, if you would like to just follow along with me and then, then I will open up the, the floor for, for your comments about this message. And I also have not forgotten your homework and that will be later on before we close out but if you want to repeat what sherry's going to say just mute your uh, microphone and that way you could say whatever you want to say but we'll let sherry lead us and i'm going to follow along what she says i'll okay. repeat it father in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus we come before you tonight we come before you tonight with humble hearts with humble hearts and we repent and we repent for not walking for not walking in perfect peace in perfect peace and perfect love and perfect love and we ask that you forgive us and we ask that you forgive us and thank you for this message and thank you for this message let us take hold of it let us take hold of it and use it in our lives and use it in our lives that we might become more like you that we might become more like you Having perfect peace. Having perfect peace. And having perfect love. And having perfect love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to start off the, the comment about the message with um, saying that uh, one thing that was said was that if we operate in that realm, in perfect peace and perfect love, then our faith will increase. And I want my faith to increase. I want it to multiply. And faith worketh by love. And so the more of God's love you walk in and you operate in, then your faith will increase. It will multiply. It will work. And, and that's, that's what I want. I want to believe the Lord for salvation for other people. I want to believe for healing for other people. I want to believe for miracles for other people. I want to believe uh, for financial blessings to come to all of you. And, and so, and I know that you have things that you, you want um, to believe for. And, and so uh, I'm just saying that this message is, it, it may be, you know, the Lord told us a long time ago not to be moved from the simplicity of the gospel. And when Brother Fred says it's a simple message, to me, that it's, it's more than that. It's something that we can live by. It's something that will help us to be um, better Christians and, and more like Jesus.